Okay, so this is the probably the maximum you're gonna pick up with this machine here. But kind of give you an idea of how big this boulder is. It's uh, I had to pull it pretty close to the machine to be able to physically pick it up. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me if that's 1,500, maybe 2,000 pounds. Uh, this is a pretty decent sized rock. Um, and yeah, as you can see it just sitting in there. But it's able to pick it up, but you can tell you're definitely to the maximum of what it's able to do. It's starting to, you know, max out the hydraulics. Uh, you have to keep it in close. I can spin around to the side uh, with the way that the boom is sitting right now and not tip over, but I wouldn't want to push it much more past this. This is this is probably the max. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna try to set it right there by that uh, rock wall there. talk about the some of the questions I've gotten on this. So some of these questions are how much does it cost, where can you buy it from, what's the warranty like, and who makes it. So start off with that last one, who makes it. So this is marketed by AGT, so that's the name that you see on it when it shows up to your door. Uh, some of the other AGT machines that they sell are produced by different manufacturers and then AGT just takes it and relabels their uh, name on it. Um, this is kind of like uh, the Pontiac Vibe is technically it's a Toyota Matrix, but Pontiac bought a whole bunch of them and put their badging on it. So AGT has done this with other machines. I did not know from all the research I've done up at this point who makes this. Uh, from what I can tell, it might be being made in-house. Um, there are some videos I've seen out there of this exact cab model being put onto the, uh, for other manufacturers. So. I don't know if it's a components thing where they're just buying a cab, a chassis, and then they're assembling it there in their plant, or if they're just buying these machines from another manufacturer and just putting their label on it. So at this point, I don't know. Um, quality of it, it's up there with any of the other bigger name machines. Um, it's not as refined as a lot of them. Uh, there's little things out there that just you know that you, you don't have to look very hard to see that this thing is a step or two down below uh, a name brand machine. There's there's no getting around that. There's no arguing that. But at the end of the day, this is designed to do a job. It's designed to dig. It's designed to push dirt, and it's designed to make you money. And if you can get a machine that does that and has some of the creature comforts like the enclosed cab, uh, air conditioning. Uh, radio, just those little creature comforts so you can do the, that job and a little bit more comfort and save quite a bit of money compared to buying a name brand, then what's wrong with doing that? Um, there's just, you know, it, it does what it does and it's kind of, uh, you see, what you see is what you get. You are getting a couple steps down in quality machine, but, you know, for the average contractor, that's not a, you, you don't need that. You know, there's no reason this machine is not going to go for four or five thousand hours. No problem. The look at the motor in it. It's a Yanmar motor. It's the same as what all the other big name manufacturers run. Uh, all the parts are easily sourceable. So, when you take everything into account, like what is, what, what's truly going to go wrong in this thing? And when you really break it down, things that go wrong on excavators are, you know, hydraulic drives. So, if you're trying to find a drive motor. Uh, hydraulic hoses. 
you can get those repaired anywhere. Um, the drive motors, you know, you can source those. Uh, you might have to do some digging. The only big complaint that I've had um, read online about this is somebody had a gas tank. Uh, it was leaking, and they couldn't find the exact same gas tank to replace it. So, parts are going to be a little bit harder to find. But if you're willing to do some more research, you know, really dig in to see if you can find some or find something that will work in lieu of the one that's on it, then you can make this work. Uh, remember, you know, being a business is about saving money and uh, cutting costs. And if you can cut costs this way by quite a bit compared to a name brand machine, you know, this thing, you know, a name brand machine is $50,000 plus dollars, so it would be the equivalent size of this. This is quite a bit less. Um, warranty on these, AGT, if you buy it directly through them, they offer a one-year warranty. I haven't heard a whole lot of great things or a whole lot of bad things. It's kind of just, you got to be able to get through to them. The warranty number that you call is the same number as your sales department. So it's only a couple people that work in the warehouse that uh, answer the phone. And so you got to think they're going to get swamped pretty easily with just, you know, they're selling these things like hotcakes. Um, so there is a warranty if you buy it from AGT. Now, these things are being sold at auctions too. So Richie Brothers, a lot of your local auctions, uh, will get one or two of these items in. And the auctions are the wild, wild west. Uh, there's no rhyme or reason to the prices. Uh, right now, at the recording of this video, AGT has listed this thing at $29,999, or $30,000. I've seen auctions where these things go over 32000 for this, and plus you have uh, auction fees on top of that, so buyer's premium, which if you don't know what that is, you buy an item for $10,000, well if it has a 10% buyer's fee, well then you're up to $11,000 on that item. $20,000, you're up to it for $22,000. So the auction fees will get you on these. So auctions are kind of a common place where people are picking these things up. With the auction you do not get a warranty. It is bought as is. They're, they're listed as unused. They're they're new. You know, you, they show up at the auction. They might have two to six hours on them from just people moving them around. But they are a new machine from the factory. It's just AGT is pumping these things out and sending them over to the U.S. and they're trying to get them in, in as many different markets as possible. And by taking them to auction, it's a guaranteed sale. But they're taking a risk that it's going to sell for a price that they're going to make money on. I've also seen these things go for, you know, in the low 20s. And I can't imagine that they, this company is making money selling these things in the low 20s. So, price point on these, if you buy it from the from the manufacturer, from AGT's website, you're right around 30,000 shipped to your door. You're probably gonna have to wait a month. Uh, that's been my experience. I've, uh, for my company, I've ordered a couple, uh, the one ton mini excavators, and I had to wait about a month for shipping to get here. So if you have a project you need to do, and you got a timeline, you're at the mercy of that shipping uh, company and the uh, vendor that you're buying them from. So you go the auction route, inspect it, inspect it, inspect it. Uh, everybody and their brother can go to these things and check them out, and you want to make sure that this thing has not been damaged in shipping. So a lot of auctions I'm seeing right now, the smaller ones of these, the one and a half tons that have the enclosed cabs. The windows are broken out of them. So don't just take the pictures that you see online. Go as close to the auction date as possible and inspect it. Make sure the air conditioning works. That's like a lot of these, you know, I've seen them not working. Uh, make sure it has oil. Make sure that all the parts are there. Make sure it has the caps for the fuel uh, fuel container. I've seen that, the, the missing caps on the fuel. So it's really up to you if you're going to buy it from an auction, you know, to do your due diligence and make sure that this thing made it there in one piece and is good to go and you're not going to have to be sourcing parts for it that may be really hard to find. So talk about the who makes it, where to buy it, price. Price like I said at the auctions is anywhere from you know the mid low to mid 20s to over 30s somewhere around there and it's just based on the demand and people do get auction or uh bidding fever. So they'll start bidding up each other and they get their heart set on a machine. Don't do that. Just set a number before you go into the auction or before you start bidding online and just say, hey, if it gets past this number, I'm not going to buy it. 
because you can get yourself into one of these for more than what you could from the manufacturer with the warranty. So uh, just be cautious with that. Um, performance out there on this thing, I've had this on this job for a couple days now. I put 15 hours on it so far and worked flawlessly. Uh, this works just as good as any of the bigger machines, the Kubotas I ran. Um, it's, the controls are just as smooth, the tracking power. Uh, it has a little bit less tracking power on the hill. There's a s slight slope over here that I'm walking up and down. I'm carrying rocks up and down trying to stack them. And it doesn't have quite the power that I wish it would, um, but it's not stalling out and it's not bogging down to the point that I can't do the job. I just wish it had a little bit more torque. Um, but power wise, phenomenal. Picking power, like being able to move rocks, not a problem. Uh, not having a hydraulic drum, yeah, that's that's a pain. I have to position the machine just far enough away so that thumb is not digging into the ground or the angle when I'm trying to grab it with the bucket isn't the wrong angle. So that's a pain in the butt. But, you know, figure a hydraulic thumb kit's probably a thousand dollars, you know, I can I can live with a pain in the butt to save a thousand dollars. Start doing some more jobs with this, and then I might start thinking about you know adding one on. Um, digging power, it's great. You know, it's great breakout force. All the hydraulics are really strong in this thing, and you also got to remember when you have a new machine like this, for the first I want to say 100 hours or so, you're not digging at full force. You're not digging at full power because you need to break in the hydraulics, you need to break in the motor, you need to break in the valves. Uh, it's all that stuff has to kind of get set in and bro broken in. If you just go full tilt on one of these when they're brand new, you're going to damage it. It's, you need to break it in slowly, be gentle on it for the first few hundred hours. Um, things that I wish it had that it does not. I wish it had a suspension seat. I actually bought the mechanism to turn this into a suspension seat and I wasn't able to truly fabricate it to make it work just the way I wanted it to. So that's a... Uh, you know, that's something I might, if I can find a very thin one, I might look into doing that. Um, other things I wish it had, it doesn't have a heater. This only has air conditioning. And you figure most of the work you're going to be doing is going to be in the spring, summer, and fall. Probably not going to be doing a ton in the winter, but if you are, just know that you do not have air conditioning. Now, there are retrofits that you can do for that. So this air conditioning box right here, you can get a heating element a heating element into there, run two hoses to your uh, to the hot water for the radiator and put in a valve control there so you can make a makeshift heater out of this. Um, it would be nice if it came from the factory like that, yeah, but I would rather have air conditioning than a heater. I can always put on more clothes. In a hot summer day when you're sitting with this motor behind you, you can only take off so much before you get in trouble for ind indecency. Um, so yeah, this is, overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, like I said, the things that are on my wish list are kind of petty things. They're not petty, but they're just, they're, they're not deal breakers for me. Um, I have no problems taking this thing to a job and doing work with it and being in here for quite a few hours, and I'm not tired at the end of the day. Um, so, yeah, if there's any other questions I can answer for you guys, uh, drop them in the comments. But yeah, this is a this is a solid machine, and it's what you see is what you get. You're not buying something to compete with Sani level quality or XCMG or one of the you know other ma major Chinese manufacturers that we have here in the U.S. But you get a machine that can do just as much as those machines can. It's just a little bit rougher on the finish side of things, and the price point is a lot better. And at the end of the day, we're in business to make money. So hopefully I answered some questions for you guys, and uh, yeah, thank you for checking out the video.